Hello, class. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the angle-angle criterion. First, I'd like to draw two triangles that have two pairs of congruent angles but are different sizes. Then we're going to check all the side lengths and see what's special. So here are my two triangles. And it turns out that all the side lengths in DEF are half of the corresponding side lengths in triangle ABC. And so what do we know about this? Are they similar? Yeah, we learned in the previous lesson about the theorem on similar triangles. And so since we have uh, corresponding angles con congruent or equal in measure and corresponding side lengths are proportional, these are similar triangles. So why do we only need two uh, pairs of angles? How do we know those th third ones are congruent? Well, since we know that those angles have to have 280 degrees, those third angles have to be the same measure. Why were those corresponding side lengths proportional? Well, we know that we have a similarity. And so the corresponding side lengths of the similar triangles must be in proportion. And is this true for any pair of triangles with two congruent angles? Well, it certainly seems reasonable. But like we know in math, we have to prove these facts. So uh, up till now, to see if triangles are similar, we have to check all six conditions so that we had three pairs of congruent angles and three pairs of uh, side lengths that were uh, proportional. Now, there's an easier way to prove that triangles are congruent, and that's with the angle-angle criterion. And it's related to angle-side-angle. Angle. Remember, we learned angle-side-angle angle is used to prove that triangles are congruent. So how is that idea similar to angle-angle criterion? Well, they both have two pairs of congruent angles, but unlike angle side angle, we don't know that the side lengths are going to be the same length, angle angle. So that's a key difference, right? We're not showing they're congruent, just similar. But we're going to use angle side angle to prove angle angle. So here we have two triangles with two pairs of congruent angles. And we want to show that the goal here is we want to um, do a dilation on triangle ABC, so that's the same size as triangle DEF. And then by transitivity, we'll have that all, uh, that these two triangles are similar. So that's the, that's the goal here. So how can we dilate this triangle to make it the same size as triangle DEF? What scale factor would we use? Well, DEF is smaller. We want to do reduction. And so we have to use a scale factor that's going to be between 0 and 1. So there's lots of correct ways to do this. I said, let's pick DE and divide that by AB. That's going to be our scale factor. And so if we perform a dilation with center A, we end up with this picture. And if it had ended up that uh, DE was larger than AB, we would have just had this segment somewhere out here, and we have to extend these sides of the triangle. So now the question is, is this small triangle, A, B prime, C prime, is that congruent to triangle D, E, F? Turns out it is. Let's do it with angle, side, angle. So we know that A and D are equal in measure. That's given to us. And what about side A, B prime? Why is that congruent to side D, E? Well, we found A, B prime by multiplying the length of A, B by the scale factor. When we do that, we multiply by the scale factor, it's going to end up that the ABs cancel, and we just end up with DE. So A prime B prime is equal to DE. And then why are angles A, B prime, C prime, and angle E congruent? Why are these the same? Well, we have a dilation, right? And so we know that those sides are parallel. So our corresponding angles have to be congruent. So those two smaller triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. Right, these are, put a little chevrons on here, we know these are parallel. So we know that when uh, shapes are congruent, they have to be similar. So by transitivity, uh, we have that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. 
could also think of that in the sense of basic rigid motions and dilations. But in the end, uh, we see that these triangles are similar no matter what. So let's apply what we learned. Are these similar? If they are, let's figure out what all the missing lengths are and the end angles. So you only have one pair of congruent angles here. So we need to check if there's a second pair. And you can do it in both of them. And it turns out that all three of the angles here are congruent. So it does satisfy angle angle. And so these are congruent. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not congruent. They're similar. So to find all the missing lengths, we can set up proportions. So try that on your own, and then I'll show you my solutions. So let's see. Our scale factor here will be 0 0.75. Let me zoom out here. Uh, zoom. There you go. Oops. So you could think of this as either a dilation or as a dilation that's enlargement or reduction. I thought of it as a reduction. So I said BC is going to be that scale factor times EF. So make sure that you're picking the lengths that uh, correspond. All right, BC touches the angles that measure about 78 degrees and about 57 degrees. So I'm just going to apply 20 thirds, 5.75, and you get 5. Same idea for DF. DF corresponds to AC. And AC is 7. And 7 divided by 0.75 is 28 thirds. Are these similar? If so, why? If not, explain why as well. Well, at first they look similar. But let's check that the, let's see, we only have one pair of congruent angles, right? We only have those ones that are 95. So we got to see if we have a second pair. Now, sometimes in math, they'll use these arcs to just um, signify that there's an angle there, not necessarily congruent. So I don't like this notation, but it's also accepted in, in uh, the world of mathematics. So, But in this case, we're not saying that they're all congruent. So the third angles end up being 60 degrees over here and 61 degrees down here. So although they look similar, they're actually not. So they are not similar triangles. OK, they tell us that these are similar triangles. How do we know that? Well, they give us one pair of congruent angles. And these ones are congruent by being vertical angles. So let's see if we can find out what the missing uh, variables are. So you can write proportions here. The 12 corresponds to 4 and the 16.5 to the x. And if you're having trouble seeing that, you can always take this one on top and turn it around. And you see that, yeah, the 12 lines up at the 4, 16.5 with the x. So it's the numbers are upside down. So solve out the cross product, divide by 12, and you get 5.5 for x. Same idea for y. 12 over 4 is y over 3.14. And so the y lines up at that 3.14. So that makes sense. Do cross product, divide by 4, and you get 9.42. And here's one. We want to explain. Explain means write out words on uh, how to find the lengths of x and y. So try that, and then I'll show you my solution. So they give us that these corresponding angles are congruent. And we're also we're told they're similar as well. Uh, but by the side splitter theorem, we know that when uh, that when we have these sides parallel, right? Because the corresponding angles are congruent, that they cut the sides proportionally. So we could write 3 over 6 equals 2 over y. So we solve that, and we get 4. If you want to think of it in terms of corresponding side lengths in a dilation, you could have said 3 over 9, right? 3 is the short length, and 9 is the whole side, equals 2 over 2 plus y. And you still get 4. It's just a little bit more algebra you got to do. find y, I'm sorry, to find x now, uh, similar idea as we've done the right-hand side here. 
So we're doing it with corresponding side lengths. Let's say we have x over 12 and 3 over 9. And so cross product, you get 9x is 36, divided by 9, you get 4. So there are our answers. In this lesson, we learned about the angle-angle criterion for showing that triangles are simple. Thanks for watching this video.